So, if you've just watched my 8,000 subscriber video, you would have seen that I've just quit my job and soon I'm going to lose my apartment. And that is still the case, but uh, after quitting my job, I decided it was a very unique opportunity where I could try something new. So what I decided to do was try and open a quarter of a million pound restaurant in the center of Amsterdam's red light district. So in two days time, I'm going to find out if that dream's a reality. And uh, here's the journey. So I'm just counting down my final days in this company that I've been with for many, many years. I've reached the highest position possible within my capacity, and that's being in charge of five very large units filled with millions and millions of pounds worth of aircraft spares. So uh, giving up this job was quite a hard decision, but uh, I think it's the right decision. I'm giving up this wonderful opportunity to take on pastures new. I've no idea what those pastures are yet, but uh, I'm sure everything will work out fine. So. Uh, it's literally just saying goodbye to a place that I've no like the back of my hand and uh, start something new. So it's been a few days now since I quit my job and uh, I'm just getting over the shock of leaving a company that I've been with since 2011. And now I've got my next problem, which is clearing out my apartment. And as you can see, it's a hell of a mess at the moment. I've got all my furniture here, bed's already gone, sleeping on the floor, uh, TV's gone and uh, at the moment I'm just tidying things up so I'm, I haven't got time to sell any of my stuff so it's really impractical for me to take pictures and list it all. Uh, I'm just giving it all away to charity shops so soon I'm going to be left with no possessions, no money, no home, no job and uh, no future. So I've been doing some big thinking over the last few days and deciding what I should do next. And uh, I don't think general employment's gonna work for me anymore because I haven't really got any big qualifications. So it's either go back and get some more education or try to open my own business. So I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna try and open a business. Now, the, the perfect business for me would probably be a pub because they're easy to set up, easy to run. You just buy and sell drinks. So uh, today I'm looking at three premises, two in Bournemouth and one in Durrington and uh, let's see if it opens my eyes a little to uh, what possibilities are available. So I've decided I'm going to open a bar restaurant. Now it's a pretty ambitious task to open a bar restaurant. So my first step is to get some bar experience. So I'm heading out to Amsterdam. Uh, I've got some work experience out there where I'm going to be cleaning in bars, wiping tables, serving customers, pouring pints, and just getting a general idea of how it all works. So uh, I'm going to be taking the National Express 14 hour coach ride because it's a lot cheaper than flying. And right now I haven't got the money. So uh, that's my next plan. Now, I haven't had much luck with National Express recently. Uh, the last time I was on National Express, I had two illegal immigrants, one in the baggage area and one in the back of the engine. And uh, my coach got delayed two hours because we were trying to get them out. And uh, he was pretty well hidden in the back of the engine. How many under, how many under? Because you're gonna go another check-in. And then the time before that, I was sat at the back of the coach. The coach crashed and I got showered with glass. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a mess and my seat fell off. It turns out my seat wasn't attached properly, so I was held there with my seatbelt and my seat just went whoop. 
So uh, yeah, haven't had much luck, but uh, Amsterdam's where I'm heading next. I've been in Amsterdam for five days now. I've been volunteering at local bars and pubs to gain some kitchen experience, and that's so I can open up my bar restaurant. But uh, in the meantime, I've actually entered a Mr. Contest for uh, Mr. Thailand. That was great fun. And uh, tomorrow I've got my first real serious business meeting. I'm gonna be meeting an investor who's hopefully gonna fund my business. So uh, wish me luck. So, I've just checked into this hotel prior to my meeting. It's uh, 176 euros and 64 cents for one night, so uh, a bit on the pricey side, but uh, I'm hoping today's meeting's gonna go really well, and hopefully uh, he's gonna invest in my business idea. And if that all goes ahead, then we're on stage two to get this business up and running. So, yeah, one hour's rest before I head out. Second floor. So I've just come back from my business meeting. Uh, the figures are quite high and it was a really intense meeting. The loan is gonna cost a rent of 6,000 a month and the repayment of the loan is also gonna be a minimum of 6,000 a month. So I might have to pay back up to 20,000 every month on this loan, Let's see what happens. Oh, 
So right now I'm staying at a city that's about an hour and a half away from Amsterdam centre and that's a city called Den Bosch and uh, I'm staying with my friend, she's let me stay in this little apartment and uh, basically I need to now design a plan where I'm going to get my hands on 80,000 euros. I need 80,000 euros capital to get my investor to invest in me as uh, protection money, that's kind of his protection money plus startup money before he gives me the rest. So. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna sit down and think how I can make 80,000 euros. Right, so my next business meeting has been confirmed for next Thursday, so that gives me exactly five days to come up with 80,000 euros. So uh, I've just booked myself back into the Botel, and that's uh, a floating hotel cruise ship that sits on the Amsterdam River. And basically I'm gonna stay there until I know what's happening next. So uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna email some properties to see if there's any apartments available to live should my business take off. And if not, I'll be heading back to the UK. So uh, yeah, in five days, I'm gonna know exactly what's going on. So uh, I've just come to this Buddhist temple and uh, I'm gonna pray for good luck. So I can see my hotel over in the distance and it's the Botel over there. So I've got a week in this boat tail to try and raise 80,000 euros and create a viable business plan so that I can get the investor on board. So it's going to be an intensive five days uh, and a lot of planning. Well, this is my room on the Botel and it's really nice. So even if I don't get the business, I'm going to enjoy five days staying on board. Well, the Botel is definitely one of the most unique places I've ever stayed. And uh, from my window, I've got a view of a submarine. So uh, yeah, really interesting. So I've spent all of today doing a bit of market research. I've been visiting all the local pubs and bars trying to find out exactly how much they earn, uh, how much they sell goods for, how much they buy the goods in for, and what the average daily takings are. And to be honest, most people are very secretive about it. So I had to do a lot of detective work, but uh, I've come up with a business plan. Uh, the expenses are a lot higher than I anticipated. So I'm not quite sure how to, uh, how to deal with that yet. But um, today I visited my storage unit. Well, it's not mine. A friend's got a storage unit nearby and they let me use it. So I've uh, got some fresh clothes and tomorrow's a new day. So, yeah, still waiting on the money. Now, I didn't want to talk too much about numbers and exact figures for business because it's quite a private issue. 
but uh, from my market research I found one business was taking 1,852 euros in a single day just on wet sales and my business plan is based roughly on those figures so uh, I'm going to pay a rent of 5,000 maybe more goodwills of 7,000 2,400 for gas and electric and water a music license of 100 a few other things and the total expense is 35,450 euros every month so uh, I need to pull in more than 35,450 euros every month to cover all my expenses my staff and uh, just about enough to give me a wage so at the moment that's going to be a real challenge So I've just checked myself into the Crown Hotel, which is smack bang in the middle of the red light district. It's a nice little room. It's got everything I need and uh, it's positioned directly opposite the premises, which I intend to open. So hopefully by looking out the window for the next few days, I'm going to judge how many people walk past and how much business I'm likely to get through the door. That way I can make a realistic estimate of my business plan. So I've had some great news today. The bank is willing to lend me 20,000 euros. So I decided to call up my investor and cancel the appointment and reschedule for the 12th of December. Hopefully that will buy me some more time to try and crack some more money from people and uh, yeah, hopefully start this business. So it's about eight o'clock on a Sunday and I've just had a quick call for an appointment for another business meeting. So I'm just going to quickly change into some nicer clothes and then uh, I'll go and meet this gentleman. Well, I got an interesting proposal from my business meeting yesterday. I was offered 127,500 euros for a 50% share of the business. So I'd have to pay that back and give away 50% of my profits. So uh, at the moment, it sounds a bit of a no-no, but uh, 
I'm going to think it over. So, I've just booked myself a meeting with the guy who owns the gambling machines in the bar I want to buy, so uh, maybe he'll have some investment money for me. So today I met the man who owns the gambling machines in the property that I want to rent and of course the gambling machines are still inside so I've been speaking with him about investment and he's not willing to lend any money at the moment but what he has said is that we can keep the machines there and take a percentage of the winnings on a 60-40 split so uh, that's good news if we get the place and I had a second meeting today with the previous accountant from the business that I want to take over so now I've got the exact figures from the accountant of how much the business makes and how much I can expect to make from it once I take it over. So uh, yeah, that's been really helpful. Well, due to the cost of staying in hotels in Amsterdam, it's working out quite expensive. So I've decided for the next few days, I'm going to head back to the UK. So uh, I've just booked a 14 hour National Express ticket and uh, yeah, just sneaking my food out the room because they don't allow food. So uh, yeah, let's get rid of that. Good advice, always sit in front of the toilet. That way you have extra leg room from the heater. And you have the toilet behind you. And you can recline as much as you want. Welcome to Euro Disney. Sorry, I'm in mean Euro Tunnel. Same thing, great, dull, boring, overly expensive, and usually full of 500 school kids. You're back in the middle of the train. Front or back, take your pick. Three toilets, either direction. First class is on the roof, the buffet car comes through halfway through. And if you've been on Euro Tunnel before, you know I'm lying. There is nothing to do for the next 45 minutes, folks. So I got back around midnight last night and the remainder of my journey was freezing cold because I was on the motorbike. I literally had to stop about four or five times just to get some feeling back in my fingers. But uh, I've just been in my fridge and noticed the freezer compartment up top has defrosted. So it looks like that's on the way out. But uh, on the positive side, I'm going to cook myself up a nice full English breakfast and uh, enjoy the remaining few days I've got here before clearing out everything and leaving this com uh, leaving this apartment completely empty. So uh, yeah, let's get some eat. Well, there's breakfast. Let's eat.
So, I had a nice relaxing day yesterday and I celebrated my 8,000 subscribers on YouTube by donating food to Cats Protection and the Pedigree Adoption Drive. But uh, today, it's all back to business and packing. I've got to clear my home, so uh, yeah, I'm making contraptions like this out of belts, sellotape and bits of cord so that I can transport my bags to the charity shop because, uh, well this one here, it weighs about, probably about 25, 30 kilos, so uh, I've got to make some strong strap device to hold it to me. I've literally got nobody I can call, uh, no real friends. You know you have like 300 friends on Facebook, but the second you call them for help, straight out the window. So uh, I'm all by myself and I've got to get everything clear in the next few days. So uh, it's going to be very busy. So my big investment meeting is just two days away. I've booked myself another National Express ride, 15 hours on the coach, and I've booked myself into a hostel this time because the funds are running short. So I'm staying at a budget hostel. Uh, it's 20 pounds a night and that includes breakfast. So can't grumble at that. Um, I've managed to raise 40,000 euros out of the possible 80,000 I need. So uh, I'm hoping that's gonna be enough to sway the investor and make him invest in me and just give me that chance. But uh, today I've got the CVs through, um, two members of staff who I've got ready to work, uh, both professional chefs and they've got the social hygiene qualifications so they'll be able to serve alcohol and serve the public. So that's where we're at, at the moment, two days away, we'll find out if it's make or break. So this is my last chance to get all of my business plan in order. I've got to make sure all the figures tally up and that there's no discrepancies when I go into that meeting. If there's one slip up, I could break the deal. So uh, yeah, all of these figures are pretty high numbers. Just look at those numbers. They're in the hundreds of thousands. And that's what I'm going to be discussing, talking about and what I can potentially earn in the future. So uh, it's big numbers. It's high game. and I'm really hoping it goes to plan. So it's Wednesday the 11th of December and it's five o'clock in the morning, which means I have exactly 50 minutes to get my bike to the other town, park it up and then jog 20 minutes to the bus stop. So I'm uh, going to make a very quick move. So now I'm just walking to town got my suitcase and I got about 15 minutes to get to the bus stop so I uh, might have to jog
Toutes les tables dehors, là, toutes les terrasses qui sont aux Même tous les festivals qu'il y a et tout. So, I've just arrived in Slotterdyke. I've got to take a walk to the store. It's about half an hour. Well, that's the hotel I stayed at for my business meeting. But uh, I've got about a 20 minute walk now to my storage unit so I can drop this suitcase off. This is filled with costumes from the Bournemouth Thai Fair, so I'm returning them. Well, I think my arm's about to fall off, but uh, I'm finally here. So there's three suitcases in there already, all filled with costumes from the Bournemouth Thai Fair, uh, the Liverpool University event, and now this is the last case to come back. And in here it's got all the, the feathery things and crowns. But uh, there's still one bag of costumes in the UK. That's staying in the UK by a friend and that's in case we get any more shows and we're going to need access quickly to costumes. So uh, let's throw this bag in. So I've got the top bunk bed and people are starting to look at me because I'm talking to my camera but um, I've got a guest below me so uh, this room is pretty much full right now. Let's get breakfast. <laughs> So it's 11.30 in the morning and uh, I've already popped down for breakfast this morning and everyone who was in this room sleeping last night has checked out. So room service has been in, they've cleaned all the beds and I've got the whole dormitory to myself. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, today's obviously the big meeting, so uh, I'm gonna find out if it's make or break. So right now I need to get in for a shower, get my papers ready and uh, yeah, begin the day. Cool. So that's the hostel and it's 13 euros a night and that includes breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So I'm just going to have some quick food before I go to my business meeting and that's in 20 minutes time so uh, it's going to be a very intense meeting, probably going to last a couple of hours and then we'll know the outcome. Fingers crossed. So I'm about to walk into the meeting with my accountant. I've got my business plan here. Let's just hope it goes well. Okay. 
So we've just finished the business meeting and it was very successful. They're happy to give me the 255,000 plus they're going to give me the premises that I'm looking for. The only downside is they're scared the municipality may close us down because it's a very suspicious transaction. I'll only be investing 40,000 euros myself, so that means I'll only be buying the drink and food. So for them to give me all of the money is a very strange occurrence. So uh, we've got to find a legal way around it and there's another meeting on Monday. That will be the final meeting, that will be make or break. So, I went to the casino last night to celebrate, but uh, I didn't expect I'd have to come back for another meeting. So I'm actually on the way back to the UK now, and I'm gonna have to come, come back again on Monday. So uh, soon I'll find out if that restaurant's mine or not. So right now I'm waiting for the bus to take me to the coach station because I'm heading back to the UK. Obviously I didn't anticipate Athens come back for another meeting on Monday, so, uh, Obviously I'm going back for one or two days and then I'm heading straight back here again for what I hope is the last meeting. Uh, I got hardly any sleep in the hostel last night. There was uh, a young lad doing naughty things, racking up on all of the, the lockers and things and pacing around the room all night, switching on the lights. So uh, yeah, terrible night's sleep. But uh, I had a good breakfast, celebrated in the casino yesterday with a few friends and uh, yeah, back to the UK for two nights. So it's now Sunday and I'm just lying here in my empty apartment and tomorrow I find out if my crazy idea of opening a Thai bar restaurant is going to become a reality. So uh, I've re-evaluated all my expenses now that I've got the official figures, the tax reports and the accounting information and I'm going to have to pay a rent of €5,000 a month. 7,000 euros a month for goodwill is up to the value of 255,000 plus interest. Utilities at 2,400 a month. Music license at 100 a month. TV internet until 200 a month. Rubbish collection 150 a month. And 5,600 for staff. So that's 20,450 euros a month just on expenses. I've then got the food and drink, which is another 26,000 euros every month to restock. Could be more, could be less. It depends on what we sell. But uh, I've just been informed by the, the investor that they're going to call me up with their decision. So I, know, I no longer need to go back to Amsterdam to find out. So it's literally just waiting on a phone call now. Um, I know this video has been a bit erratic throughout because uh, obviously I didn't in, intend on doing this. I didn't intend on giving up my job and then going to open a quarter of a million pound restaurant. So uh, the whole thing's been a bit of a crazy journey. 
and uh, it's been a lot more hard work than it probably looks in this video because I'm being very happy about it. Oh, we are going to see the investor. The reality is it's constantly on the phone, phoning banks, phoning loan companies, speaking with people day in, day out and going to meet people at very short notice. And I've probably spoke to about 36 different investors uh, and that includes the banks and loan companies. So it's been really chaotic. It's been a really hard journey. So uh, I'm hoping it all pays off and tomorrow we get a yes. If not, we'll see what happens next. So today is Monday and there's three big things happening today. The first of which is I'm giving away all of my furniture. So all the tables, chairs and wardrobes that I've collected over the past year are all going to Prama Care. Now that's a charity shop that helps the elderly uh, by providing care services in the local community. So I think that's probably the best place that this stuff could go. Uh, secondly, I'm expecting my big phone call. So uh, we're going to find out today if I've got that restaurant or not or if there's going to be another delay. I really hope not. I just hope it's a simple yes and then I can get on with the business. And the third thing is I was contacted this morning to say that I've got a property in Amsterdam centre for 650 euros a month. Now, anyone who knows that area will know it's bloody expensive. And for 650 euros, that's uh, an incredible rate to get, a, get an apartment, all inclusive of bills. So uh, two positive things today and one we're still waiting on. So the Prama charity shop guys have just come in and uh, to my complete surprise, they've only taken the valuable expensive tables. So the solid wood oak table and the mahogany table have both gone, uh, along with a, a few little trinkets that they deemed worth value. But they've left me with the, the wardrobe. They've left me with the, all the small tables, the sofa and uh, the little dressing cabinet. So I was a bit taken back by that. I was really hoping that they were going to take everything. And uh, yeah, now I'm stuck with this and I've got a few days to clear the flat still before obviously I move out. So yeah, what to do now? So about 30 minutes ago, I just got off the phone to the investor and his lawyer and they said to me they found a loophole to get around the municipality problem. And the way they would do that is bring in a third party investor who would invest 50,000 euros and the main investor that I've got already would invest 205,000 euros. So um, yes, it's a go ahead. I've got the restaurant. I've managed to start a business from scratch. And uh, in the meantime, I completely forgot about uh, making my video. So I literally just necked a whole bottle of Stella. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good right now. Uh, the only downside is I still have to get rid of this mega wardrobe, uh, this dressing table, but, uh, oh, and the sofa. But as for the, the small tables, I found another charity shop that was willing to take those. And that was uh, the Mage Charitable Trust. You may remember them from my fashion show video. And uh, they were more than happy to take those, but it's only a small shop, so they couldn't take the rest. It looks like I'm gonna be breaking the furniture up. So today I've got the fun job of smashing up this sofa and that wardrobe and getting it into bin bags. If I can't get it in bin bags, I'm going to have to hire a skip and that's 250 quid for a load and weight. So uh, oh, let's smash it up.
So, as you can see, the sofa is now completely demolished. Now onto this one. So, as you can see, I've completely disassembled my wardrobe and sofa. And uh, as for the big pieces of wood over there, they go into a fire pit. Somebody who's uh, got a big old fire pit, they've said I can take the big pieces there. But it's a two mile walk with that. So uh, gonna be fairly busy tonight. As for the black bags, I'm gonna put them out with the rubbish. So uh, yeah, fairly successful day. And I've saved myself 250 plus quid on a skip. So it's now midday and I've just received a very important phone call from the lawyer. They're very concerned about the effects of Brexit and what it might do to me living in the Netherlands and owning a business. Now, obviously, there's certain exemptions if you own a business that you'll be able to stay over there. But uh, since I haven't got an address yet, if Brexit was to start its procedures over the next couple of weeks, it could make my life very difficult. And uh, in that instance, it's actually caused a bit of doubt for the investor. So I need to come up with an idea to get around that. And uh, I'm not sure what to do yet. But basically, there's another meeting tomorrow back in Amsterdam. So everything has to go in this house today because, uh, yeah, the tenancy runs out this week. And if I'm in Amsterdam, I'm not going to come back in time. So I've got to pack everything away, hand the keys back. And uh, yeah, I think, to be honest, it's all going in the bin. So as you can see, my flat's completely empty. I've got 20 minutes to catch my coach in Ringwood. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to make a move. So I'm on the ferry right now and due to the strikes in France it's been delayed four hours so we're stuck in the middle of the ocean for four hours before we can go into Calais. Well, we got on the berth, it 
it's uh, I'm unsure as to whether we'll be able to discharge the traffic or not, but uh, we'll take that so as it comes at you know, half an hour's time. So on the way into Cali now, and apologies again for these delays. So it's 11.30, I've just arrived back in Amsterdam, several hours late. Um, I need to get to the store, get ready, and then make my way to this meeting, maybe get something to eat as well. So I've been to the store, but there's nowhere to freshen up. So uh, I don't know if you've heard of an app or a website called couch surfing, sofa surfing, whatever it was, but uh, I've got somebody who's gonna lend me an address to, uh, to uh, get ready and get sorted. So this is the, uh, the place, I just hope it's not a murderer. So I've just freshened up using one of the houses on the sofa surfing website and uh, now to get past this uh, Brexit problem and the business bank account I'm going to meet up with Lynn. We've got a solution but I need to get Lynn on board so uh, she's got Dutch citizenship and it could make my life a lot easier so uh, yeah let's go. So the final investment meeting is in 15 minutes. I'm just here with Lynn. We're going to meet with my accountant, we're going to meet with the lawyer and obviously the big investor and hopefully today we can get things sorted but I've got a little plan with Lynn which could find a loophole around the Brexit and bank account issue. So uh, I'll explain more later but let's get to the meeting. Because then, um, and, and every time, if you pay this every month, and in, in six months you have uh, twenty-five thousand, uh, and you think I, uh, I did already pay. Oh, three thousand five hundred so here we are once again back on the hotel and the reason we're on the hotel is because it's only 33 pounds a night which is incredibly cheap and as far as the meeting was concerned today, it was an absolute success. I now have the contract. I am the new owner of a Thai bar restaurant in the centre of Amsterdam's red light district. So I uh, had a few drinks earlier to celebrate, but uh, now I'm going to talk about the figures. So obviously I got to transfer money from the English bank accounts to the investor, the main investor, so that it covers his deposit. So I'm going to go back to the UK tomorrow, another long coach ride and transfer funds to his account. And then around the 14th of January, a third party investor is going to transfer 50,000 euros to my main investor. Then I'll have to pay the third party investor back his money, plus the main investor, plus all the loans, banks and individual people in between that I've tried to borrow money from. Um, so, yeah, the business is officially mine. Well, not on paper anyway. On paper, I've had to put it in Lynn's name, which is where we're getting around the Brexit issue, the whole uncertainty of Brexit, and the fact I haven't got Holland address yet. So uh, I've had to put the business in her name so she can open the business bank account, get everything started, and so I've got an address to send mail to that's in Holland. So uh, on paper, Lynn's got a new business, but uh, I'm responsible for all the money, the finances, the restaurant itself. So uh, it's going to be a lot of work. And then at a later date, when I've got all settled in Holland, 
will transfer it all back to me but i'll have to put a little bit of money in there to make it look like a legitimate transaction so uh that's the way we've got around the issue at the moment uh, i'm officially the owner of the restaurant and i think this journey has been an absolute success so uh yeah looking forward to opening it up So I've just arrived back in Ringwood. I'm walking back from the coach station. And obviously I was gonna pick up my bike and go back to my apartment, but uh, that's not gonna happen because I haven't got an apartment. So I've just made a couple of last minute calls to see if I can stay somewhere tonight. And it's not looking promising. And that's locked off. Okay. So I found a place to stay last night and it's in this storage room. So uh, there's a lawnmower, a uh, washing machine and loads of other bits in here. This room is packed. But um, today I need to get an early start, get to the bank and transfer that money. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So right now I'm on my way to the bank and that's to make my first initial two transactions. One of 5,000 euros and another of 5,000 euros plus uh, Holland tax, which is 21 cents. So it's actually 6,050 euros. Uh, it's a lot of money, but uh, it's what I need to send today to seal the contract. So uh, let's go. So there's a bit of the story missing at the moment and that's that before I went back to Holland I actually went to the agency to hand back my keys and they wouldn't accept them. So uh, I'm actually back at my old apartment again now and that is so I can meet the landlady to give her the keys back who I must say has been exceptional throughout my tenancy. But uh, today I've transferred the money to the bank account, 11,050 euros and that's gone directly to my investor. So uh, that initiates my contract and gets everything started. But for now, I'm just going to quickly uh, give one more hoover over the place and just tidy it up so that it's absolutely spotless for the next people who come in. And uh, yeah. So had a nice easy day yesterday, nice and relaxed and had an early Christmas dinner because obviously I'm not going to be here Christmas. So sat down with the family, roast dinner on the lap and just had a, an enjoyable, relaxing day. But today it's back to business. I've been phoning all of my bill companies. That's the, the council tax, Wessex Water, Bournemouth Water, Scottish Southern Electric, Talk Talk. Talk Talk was an absolute nightmare transferring me all around the country to all these non-english speaking people to cancel my account and i'm still not sure if it was cancelled after 30 minutes of of speaking with them so uh yeah absolute nightmare but today i've got to get back down the bank i've got to transfer another 2500 euros over there and that's to buy initial stock food and drink and then i've got to book another national express ticket and get back on the coach today because tomorrow i've got a meeting at the notary at 1 30 in the afternoon so uh it's going to be another very very busy day No, 
So I've just been to the bank and transferred another 2,500 euros and that's to buy the initial food and drink stock for the restaurant. And uh, while I was downtown, I picked up this lovely card for the folks back home. And uh, I'm just going to quickly fill that in, stick a few hundred quid in and uh, that'll be Christmas sorted. Um, it's uh, quite a bad year this year because obviously I'm not going to be here for Christmas and most of my family are suffering with uh, severe health problems. So uh, we didn't get the chance to have the family meal, the gather round or anything. And uh, yeah, everything's a bit of a struggle at the moment. So I'm hoping this opportunity to go and make some real money, I'll be able to help them out in the future. So uh, I'm really hoping this business venture is going to be successful, if not just for me, but for them as well. So I'm just on my way to the coach station for what I hope is the last time. And then tomorrow, a business trip to the notary and I'll be the new owner of the Thai bar. So right now the ferry is completely empty. There's only like 25 cars on the whole ship. So uh, yeah, I'm guessing it's pretty light tonight and that's why it's so wavy. But uh, yeah, surprising. I would have thought kind of like everyone going away for Christmas, this place should be full, but it's empty. It's 8 o'clock in the morning and I've just arrived in Slotterdyke and it's absolutely tipping it down with rain. So uh, all I'm going to do is make my way to the store, try and get some rest and uh, get freshened up for my meeting at 1.30. Oh. So there's not really much I can do in the way of freshening up, so uh, I've just put a bit of uh, deodorant on, smell fresh, and uh, I'm sure I can use the rain to comb my hair over. But uh, I'm trying to get hold of Lynn at the moment, she's not picking up the phone, and in three and a half hours we've got that meeting, and if she doesn't turn up to sign that paperwork, uh, I could have a really awkward situation. So uh, I'm going to keep trying, for, trying phoning her and just hope she picks up that phone. It's uh, yeah, quite annoying at the moment. So I've just met up with Lynn, I haven't had time to make any videos but we're now on our way to the notary so uh, we're going to go inside and hopefully get these contracts legalised, signed and apostled. Hi, 14. Almost. You okay to sign your name and everything? Yeah. Good. 
think so. Everything gonna be yours. <laughs> oh yeah, want the the code. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So this is the A location and I am officially the new owner of an A location quarter of a million restaurant. Looking good. What color we have today? I think uh, purple, red, pink. Yeah, blue is nice. So, thank you for joining me on this crazy adventure of starting a quarter of a million euro restaurant from, well, from nothing really. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been absolutely crazy. There was no intention of doing it from the start. And as far as those of you who are concerned about my motorcycle channel, I'm going to make a special trip back every month to film one motorcycle vlog, possibly a tour up around the country. Uh, but that's what I'm going to try and do, live up to the promise of keeping that going. So, uh, right now, once again, thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope it's given you some inspiration if you're thinking of starting your own business. And I'll do an update after I've got the place up and running. So I'll see you next time.